Now in these questions, we're going to multiply decimals with hundredths by 10. But first, let's look at 5 times 10. You probably already know that the answer is 50, and you might have been taught that you can multiply whole numbers by 10 by just putting a zero on the end. That works for whole numbers, but it doesn't work for decimals. So first, let's look at 5 times 10, but let's use the same method that we're going to use to multiply decimals. So first, we write the number out. And remember, there's really an invisible decimal point on the end of every whole number. So we can write 5 and then a decimal point. What we do is copy down the decimal point and then we're multiplying. So as long as we multiply by a number larger than 1, the number gets bigger. So digits are moving to the left. And we're multiplying by 10, which has one zero. So digits move one square to the left. So if we copy this 5 down, 1 square to the left, we know that the place value column before the decimal point is the 1's column, and we can't have an empty 1's column, so we need to write a 0. So now we have 50 and a decimal point at the end, so we have a whole number. 5 times 10 is 50. We can use the same method to multiply 0 0.5 by 10. So we write out the decimal, and copy down the decimal point. Now when we multiply by 10, digits move one square to the left. So we can copy this zero down one square to the left and do the same with this five. Now we have zero five and a decimal point on the end. And if we have a decimal point on the end, we have a whole number. So we can just write our answer as five because all this zero tells us is that we don't have any tens in our number. Now we have 0 0.05 times 10. So again, we write the number out and copy down the decimal point. To multiply by 10, the digits move one square to the left. So if we copy the digits down one square to the left, we now have 0, 0 0.5. Now we can't have an empty ones column but we don't need this zero telling us that we have no tens, so we can just write our answer as 0 0.5. Now notice our results so far. When we had five ones and we multiplied by 10, we got five tens. When we had five tenths multiplied by 10, we got five ones. And when we had five hundredths and we multiplied by 10, we got five tenths. And that's because when we multiply by 10, digits move one place value to the left. Because when you have 10 of something, you have the place value to the left. So what is 0 0.09 times 10? Well, we write the number out, copy down the decimal point, and move the digits across one square to the left. So our answer is 0 0.9, because this 0 in our tens we can ignore. Now we have 0 0.43 times 10. So we write out the decimal, copy down the decimal point, and move the digits across. That gives us 4.3. So finally, we have 4.03. And again, to multiply by 10, copy down the decimal point, and move the digits one square across. That gives us 40.3. And it's really important that we include this zero because it's in the middle of our number. If we didn't write this zero, the four would still be in our ones column, but we need to show that that's moved to the tens. So let's have a look at some of the questions that we did. We had 0 0.05 times 10, and we know that the second digit after the decimal point is our hundredths digit. So, to show 0 0.05, we can show 5 hundredths, or 5 parts out of 100, on this rectangle. Now, we also know that multiplying by 10 means making the number 10 times bigger. So, if we shade 10 times as much of this rectangle in blue, you can see that we now have 5 tenths of this rectangle shaded. So, that's 0 0.5. We also had 0 0.09 times 10. So that's 9 parts out of 100, 
or nine hundredths, but again, when we make it ten times bigger, we can see that we now have nine tenths of our rectangle shaded, so that's 0 0.9, because the first digit after the decimal point is the tenths digit.